Hi, so welcome back to the channel. I've actually made videos for her in the past, but I just never got to upload them. Hopefully, I'll get to upload this one. Maybe I'll upload the old ones that I recorded. But let's get into this. This is Lynette Atkins. She kind of blew up on YouTube. You feel me? She got 90.8K subscribers. I've watched a few of her videos. You feel me? She's she she does a good job with her camera. She has a better background than me. Look at her. Her shit look clean. Her camera kind of blurs the background and looks nice. You know, she's always beautiful for the camera, whereas I'll be coming on here looking hit and crazy. And, you know, I feel like she has that nice complexion. Her skin is clean, all of that. I feel like the YouTube algorithm, like, you know, loves, you know, this specific, you know, feel me? Like brown skin or like, you know, you're not, you're not white. Well, I think the YouTube algorithm loves white people. I'm not going to hold you. But they also love like the mixed, you know, the in-betweenish, you know, you you got that light complexion but you're still black but also you got like nice looking eyes you feel me me on the other hand i'm dark skin black eyes you feel me? like i don't think the youtube algorithm fucks with that the youtube algorithm sees that and it's like ew get this shit out of here um but this video is called how i gained seventy thousand subscribers in four months how to grow on youtube in 2021 i want to see if i could learn a little something see some gems you know see what she's actually talking about so far, I got 433 likes, one dislike. She got 90.8K subscribers. Don't know if I said that already. She got 2,822 views. Let's get straight into it. What's good, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a fun one because I'm going to be sharing with you guys how I grew my YouTube channel in the past few months. I started my YouTube channel about three years ago, and I really just started growing about three or four months ago. I started out the year with less than... Wow. So she just started growing like three or four months ago. That's crazy. That's interesting. Um, Yeah, she started three years ago. So I wonder what her first few videos were looking like. Me, I've only been doing this for a year so far. Almost at a thousand. But she's had a huge amount of growth in a short amount of time. Which um probably might be due to like one or two specific videos. I see that a lot. A lot of people who blow up crazy, they blow up off of like one or two specific, very specific videos and 10,000 subscribers and I now have 90,000 subscribers. For me, growing my channel has completely changed my life. I've been able to quit my nine to five job. I started doing this as a full-time career and I've just built a community that I love so much. So I wanna share with you guys all the things cute, that I cute. have learned when it That's comes to cute. growing a YouTube channel. And I also wanna share with you guys some things that I would recommend you guys avoid. Actually, she got timestamps in her. That's also pretty cute. She has nice little timestamps. She put, you could tell she put effort into this um a lot more than i do maybe i should start doing that first of all just because i've kind of been doing this for a while now and i feel like there's some things that i was doing in the past that was really holding me back from growing my channel so yeah let's go ahead and jump right in if you guys aren't already subscribed make sure you guys are subscribed down below i have tons of videos on how to grow as a content creator how to all right, all right, all right, all right. okay i'm gonna subscribe i'll give you a like too you're welcome um, let's get into it. Make sure y'all subscribe and like her channel. You feel me? She already got 90.8k. I mean, you might as well. Um, I like black excellence. I believe she's black. You feel me? Um, or mixed. Not, well, yeah, obviously she's black, but she's mixed. You feel me? She got nice, beautiful eyes, whatever. Nice complexion. Um, she, uh, you know, she's in between ish. She's not dark skin, technically, but she's not extremely light skin escape the nine to five if you want to do this for a full-time job so make sure you guys are subscribed oh, yeah. so you guys don't miss anything oh yeah we all we trying to escape the nine to five you feel me so for me the best piece of advice that i really got when i first started making youtube videos was that no one knows who you are right as harsh as this sounds no one facts but i don't really want to tell people who i am i'm not gonna hold you i don't want to tell you who i really am i i i, I drop little hints and i'll tell you a little bit about my life here and there but i don't really want to tell niggas who i am i just want to make videos and tell y'all what i think about certain shit that's all i don't really want y'all to get to know me know me maybe in the future but when i have like a lot of subs but like do y'all care? Do niggas care to get to know me? Not, do you really care? Or do you just want to hear what I have to say? Right? Cares about you until you make them start caring. You really have to ask yourself, what value are you providing to people in your videos, right? When no one knows who you are, what is the reason that someone's gonna want to watch you in particular? And that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be like an expert in a certain topic. The value that you 
the value I want to give is just my thoughts. You feel me? If you if you like minded and you think or you think that you're learning something from me, that's all I want to provide. And also my reaction to these videos, you know, give my little two cents. I feel like I'm not stupid. But I'm not smart either. I'm not I'm not. <laughs> you feel me? A lot of people, I feel like there's a lot of people who go around saying they're smart, uh, intelligent, blah, blah, blah. People not like that more. And they base that off of maybe how much money they're getting or certain, you know, people base intelligence off of, you know, external factors, what they're doing in life. Whereas I don't think that's the case. Intelligence, I feel like is very, um, very debatable for me, <laughs> whether someone's intelligent or not. Um, it's very circumstantial. It's very... I feel like it's very, it's the word objective for me. Like, like I personally don't feel like I'm smart because I feel like there, it's very, it's, it's a weird thing to say that you're smart because everything that you know is because you learned it. You feel me? Everything you know is because someone told it to you. For the most part, most of the shit that you know, because, and most of the shit that, that you know, other shit that you know that you didn't learn from someone is because you was curious, you feel me, touching and stuff. You know, the basic stuff, instinctual stuff. Um, But most of the stuff that you actually, actually know is because you read it in a book or you learned it from someone else. So to say whether you're actually smart, mm, it's very debatable because everything you learned was from someone else. So are you really smart? I don't know. It's debatable. I'm, I'm getting really into that, but I don't know. Are you really smart? I, that's why I don't go around saying I'm smart because it's like uh, it's and then when I hear people say they're smart I'm like eh, are you really are you really how much do you really know how much do you learn by yourself do you talk to yourself or do you just learn from a book or learn from other people or listen to what people say hmm you might bring to people is that you inspire people you motivate people right you have a unique story and background that no one else has so facts, really consider facts. like what is your story what are the things i want to motivate y'all to work out and get money <laughs> that's that's it things that you have been through in your life live comfortably don't complain you know just be on your shit you feel me and how can you translate that into your content? I think this can be a little bit confusing because a lot of times we see some of our favorite creators making vlogs, right? Or what they eat in a day. And we automatically want to click it because we know our favorite creators. They already have built a relationship with their audience. So their audience will naturally want to watch their vlogs, right? Or see what they eat in a day. Whereas you, when you're starting to grow your channel, no one knows who you are yet. So for you as a complete stranger to your potential audience, people may not care about you just vlogging your everyday life, but if you have a vlog about your recent trip to Italy right after the pandemic, people might want to click that. Or maybe someone doesn't really care about what a stranger eats. So kind of like clickbait. That's kind of like clickbait content when she was describing. She's basically saying you got to trick people into getting to click on your videos based on how you title it. You feel me? After the pandemic. So you're using keywords like the pandemic to trick people into watching your video. Um, Because, you know, you don't have a fan base or whatever in a day but maybe they care about it if it's what what someone eats in a day to gain 50 pounds right someone who wants to gain weight uh, uh, will want uh, to click trick, on that video so when you're really trick trying to grow your channel with every single content. video that you make when you're planning your content when you're uploading it when you're titling it when you're making your thumbnail i'm just gonna react bro but this is a reaction channel so um if you find this video is because of someone else is content like, if you found this video, you probably watch her content, maybe. So if you like what I'm saying so far, you know, or whatever, you know, subscribe or whatever. But um, I might react to more of her stuff. If you like this reaction so far, then, you know, you might like my channel, maybe. Well, keep in mind that no one knows who you are, and you have to give them a reason to want to click your video. Use Man, numbers. Use your... That's mad work. I got to give people a reason to watch me. Like, you can't just watch me just because. Like, come on. But nah, like, I mean, it makes sense, but it's like, damn, nigga, like, I really got to put in work. Like, I really got to give you a reason. Like, you, you can't just look at me and be like, oh, you, you can't just tell. Like, you should be watching me. You can't just tell that, like, maybe I might give you some insight on your life. You can't tell just by looking at me. I don't know.
your success stories, use some of your struggles. People can relate and identify with those things, even if you are a stranger, versus you just titling your video, what I eat in a day. My next piece of advice is to not limit yourself too quickly by niching down right away. So for me, this is one I of the biggest mistakes that, that I made in my YouTube career was that I tried to niche down way too quickly. I mostly react to joke content, so I kind of niche down my shit, but like I'm trying to react to other shit. So that's what I'm going to start doing, reacting to more other shit, but I'm still doing the joke content because I love that shit. But let's continue. I had one college advice video oh, do really, mad really well, and I stuck with that for like two years. All of my videos college were on college, college advice. Um, college vlogs. I would try to put the word college in every Everything. single video title that I possibly could. To me, that was my niche and I had to stick with it. And that really inhibited my growth for years. So I really, really encourage you, don't be afraid, even if you start noticing that your channel is growing a little bit, if you're starting to get a few views here and there on certain topics, don't yeah, feel like yeah, you only have to make videos there. on that one topic because again, you really want to build an audience that likes you for you. For and that me. will really give you a chance to grow your- Y'all don't like me for me? Damn, it's a harsh word. It's, it's a cold world, bro. Y'all can't like me for me? Come on, damn. What y'all like, what, what like about this channel, for real? Why, why do why do you click on this video for real let me know in the comments below what what made you click on this video i mean if you don't like me that's cool you know just go to a different channel like there's other people out here there's there's a million people in this world you feel me like other people have better might have better insights you know like you want to hear about my struggles do you really no you don't you really don't but um yeah um for the most part yeah you feel me? i forgot what i was talking about Fuck your audience outside of that one little niche, right? So for me, there's only so many people who want to watch college advice videos. So you're really going to expand. Yeah, you're only going to get college people, obviously, or people who are going into college who are still in high school. The size of your market, the size of- Like me, I'm out of college. Why would I click on a college advice video? I don't care about that. <laughs> your potential audience when you're expanding the variety of your videos have some sort of mission have a direction for your channel but don't feel like you have to niche down and only make hair videos right away even now i'm not super niche down i make videos like these like on how to grow a youtube channel but i also make yeah that's why i found your channel that's why i kind of like your videos you, you know i like i like your content you know and you know pleasing your content is pleasing to the eyes not just talking about you i mean you you are pleasing to the eyes but it's also your background i like your little your little what you do with your backgrounds in your videos you do a good job you feel me i wish i could do the same but you know yeah stuck with this for now until i get you know until i move on spirituality videos i make videos on how to escape the nine to five i make a very wide variety of content just because i know that not all 90,000 of my subscribers may be into watching videos like these, right? But someone's going, people, people who subscribe to my channel are probably subscribed to me because they like my personality. And I know for me, because I'm so consistent, I'm going to deliver value to all of my subscribers in at least one of my videos every couple of weeks. So yeah, that brings me to the most important and probably the most common tip that you've heard when it comes to growing a channel. And that is to be consistent. Be as consistent as you possibly Possibly can with consistency is key with anything bro anything in life consistency is key you will hear that word thrown at you often and i think that's what matters most to me like i don't care if my channel blows up quick or whatever i don't care about the views the numbers none of that i really just care about being consistent bro i want to see and ten. i want to look back in 10 years and see my videos and be like damn bro I posted how many videos I have how much content on my channel bro I, have, I could go back and see myself 10 years ago bro and it's all uploaded on YouTube is never going away unless you know YouTube shuts down or like and then I could show my children what I looked like 10 years ago what content I was making bro like it's just a storage for me you feel me it, it really is a storage for me like besides my phone like I can record stuff on my phone but for the most part, if I break my phone or I don't upload it to the cloud, then I lose that shit. 
but YouTube is like unlimited storage once I upload it. So this shit will be around forever and I can go back and look at it. That's why I kind of like this shit. Uploading the reason why. And I already said I'm going to be consistent forever. I'm going to drop videos from now till I'm 65. I swear to God, I'm not going nowhere. I promise I'm going to be here forever. I like this shit. Why this is so important. I wish I started sooner. I wish I started when I was like, I actually had a YouTube channel when I was like 13 and I dropped a few videos with my cousins and my brother from Jamaica. Can't find that channel. I don't know where it is, but um, I wish I kept doing YouTube from when I was 13 and I just stayed consistent, bro. It's because YouTube rewards consistency, right? The algorithm loves to see consistent creators. They're more likely to push you and recommend you to non-subscribers when you're uploading consistently. It For does. me, I had my YouTube channel for a few years, but I wasn't really consistent until like, honestly, like last year. So for me, the way that I started- Yeah, be consistent, bro. Be consistent. Becoming consistent, consistent on my channel consistent. was I committed myself. I think it was like the beginning of 2020. I committed to uploading a video every Sunday, right? I just told myself, okay, this is going to be the day of the I week that I upload. No matter day, what, I'm going to at least. I upload every other day. I only missed recently because I went on a trip, but like I upload every, almost every other day or at least a few videos every week. You feel me? So you're going to see content from me. If you subscribe, if you want consistent content, if you want to just watch someone talk about shit, subscribe and like my shit. You feel me? least upload every single Sunday. You know, when you have other things going on, it makes it really, really hard sometimes to stay consistent, but yeah, having a specific day five. of the week makes it lot, easier bro. to plan around. Because I know for me, like when I was working my nine to five, I knew that it's I was hard. uploading on Wednesdays. So for me, I just would not make plans on Tuesday nights, right? Like my yeah. friends wanted to hang out on Tuesdays. I would just say no, because I my knew fool. Wednesdays were my Slow upload days, that. right? So it just makes it really easy for you to kind of plan your life. And once you start getting consistent with uploading once a week then you can add on a second video right so maybe you want to upload every sunday and wednesday and then the more consistent you right, this is stuff i already kind of know so i'm gonna skip through most of the consistency and go towards the end because my video is getting kind of long loading a vlog consistently so hopefully that makes sense right you want to be consistent not only for the algorithm but for your audience the next thing that i really recommend you guys do is focus Focus, focus, focus on your thumbnails and on your titles. And this is again a really common. Ah, uh, 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 that's the hardest part because most of my videos are reactions. But, um, yeah, thumbnails and titles are important if you didn't know. But like, it is what it is for this channel. There's not much I can do because all my videos are reactions. So I will put reaction at the end of every video. I just steal your people's titles. That's pretty much what I do. I steal your title and I put reaction at the end. It's not much else I can do. What I can think of a creative title. You know, that's a lot of work. Um, That's kind of why I created a reaction channel in the first place. So I don't have to do that. I can just put reaction at the end. But if I want to start a different channel, I definitely try my best to create a creative title. But it is what it is. You feel me? Like, let me skip a little bit. Title. So you have to think about your thumbnail and your title, like the gift wrap of your video, right? You're it's clickbait. You got to make people, you got to trick people. Feel me? It's, it's a scam. It's a scam when you think about it because you you try you really trying to like get people to click on your shit. Your video can be the most high quality, amazing video in the entire world. But trash. if it's not wrapped I'm nicely, gonna... if it doesn't have a cute little bow around it, no one's gonna really be tempted to That's open that BS. it, right? You have to put in- That's that BS right there. That honestly sucks for someone who put in a lot of work. The video's clean, but they just don't get attention because of their title or their thumbnail. It's trash time and effort into your title and into your thumbnail the same way that you want to put in time and effort into creating the video like i will even make maybe like five or six, Ooh, six different drafts those are some nice thumbnail can you teach me can you teach me how you made those because like those are some nice on looking thumbnails like teach me for real of a more versus when i was using like a screenshot in a video and for me, when I started doing that, it definitely started use? working, right? People started clicking on my videos way more versus when I was using like a screenshot in a video. I also have my Instagram pictures for being very big um, pictures with a lot of white space in them. So I started using my Instagram pictures for my uh, thumbnails because my Instagram pictures are pretty high quality. Okay, okay. And she uses IG me, pictures. 
Again, I've been making YouTube videos for three years. And for me, I honestly just did not start seeing success until I stopped overthinking it. The second that I stopped overthinking with my videos and my niche and my um, I kind of already don't do that. I like, I don't really overthink these videos. I kind of just hit record and like whatever I think on the time is what I'm saying. You feel me? I don't have a script in front of me and none of that. Like all of my hand movements and interactions is just my normal movements. Sometimes I'll be touching my bear too much. Like I just be doing this a lot as a habit or sometimes I'll be touching my face or whatever, or like whatever, like it really is whatever, like this is all natural for me. So you feel me? Like it is what it is. I'm not reading from a script. None of that. I don't want to do that. I want this all to be real and natural. You feel me? That's why I do this shit. And I like it. That's why I like this shit. You feel me? So if you fuck with my channel, if you like this content, if you watch all the way through, I appreciate you. Um, but I'm gonna keep dropping content. I hate dropping these 20 minute videos. I have like three of them back to back so far, but it is what it is. If you, if you, if you watch all the way through, I appreciate that, but let's get to the end of this. Um, trust the process. You feel me? Trust the process. Don't go against the flow. You feel me? Just do what you gotta do, and that's what life. That's what everything. You feel me? Like trust the process. Go with the flow. You see something going up, ride the wave, and you see it start going down, ride it back down. You feel me? Like like don't don't go against it. Don't fight it. Just go with it. Put those down and just start doing it and just start learning for yourself. I promise you the better off you will be. So yeah, hopefully that was helpful in some way. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys- Somewhat. It was somewhat helpful. I appreciate you, Lynette Atkins. I like your videos too. Your shit is clean, bro. What camera are you using? First of all, I'm gonna try and figure it out. I'm gonna get a camera soon for better quality. I know I'm all over the place, but- yeah, I'm going to get a camera soon for better quality within the, like the next year. So I don't want to get it too soon, but um, this iPhone is working, it's doing its job, you feel me? So I don't, I don't really care to jump to it too fast, but I'm going to get it eventually. And I like and subscribe, so you got me now, you feel me?